Hey, it's Jeff McNichol down here at Mom's Music, 1900 Melwood Avenue. I was just thinking, when I was a kid, the magic was at Frankfurt Avenue, the Mom's Music at Frankfurt Avenue. And I used to beg people to get a ride down there just to hang out with the guys and see all the cool gear. Now that I'm the owner of this store, it's like a dream come true. We're recreating the magic with the vibe that we used to have at the old store. We're carrying all the gear that you're going to possibly want. We're giving you the outstanding service and personal attention that you deserve. Yeah, so we've got the great guitar shop here. We're carrying USA Fender, USA Gibson, Paul Reed Smith, Gretsch, Jackson, Charvel, anything you could possibly want. We're going to have it for you. Mom's is and always will be Louisville's music store. Thank you for tuning into the Metal Forge. I am Mark Jackson and I'm your host. The premise of the show is pretty simple. Awesome interviews and awesome music. If you want to contact me, hit me up at MetalForgeRadio at gmail.com or visit the website MetalForgeRadio.com. And now, let's get this show on the road. What's going on, Metalheads? Thank you for tuning into the Metal Forge this week. I am Mark Jackson and I am your host. Today I'm featuring Hugo Munez, also known as Witch Hammer, from the awesome band Witch Trap. These guys are from Medellin, Colombia, and a huge shout out to all of our South American listeners out there. It is great to have you all on board, and the Metal Forge is taking over the world, one country and one band at a time, and guess what? We're taking it. So, I had some time earlier this week to sit down and chat with Hugo about a lot of things, music and otherwise related. And one of the things that was really hard for me was coming to realize how most of the citizens there have had a terrible time with life and how the cartel and the corrupt government have taken over the country. It makes me think of how something like music can really change and save your life. And a big shout out to you people who have had music change and save your life because it's pretty fucking heavy. But more on that later. Let's talk questions. I'm going to keep it kind of short and sweet this week. Let's get into the actual question of the week here. And I usually ask a different question, but this time I was like, you know what? I want to throw it out there. I want to ask you guys something that I ask all the guests that come on the show. What is the worst album by your favorite band? And boy, did I actually really get some good ones. Chris Leffler said uh, Super Collider by Megadeth. And he goes, but they have had a few other stinkers as well. And yes, I do agree. Someone did reply back to that saying that Risk was worse than Super Collider. I don't know. I think Super Collider is really it. Jerry Parksdale said, Anathema. Every single album was incredible except for the last one, and it was unlistenable. I'm not sure. I have not listened to them, but I will check it out. Colin Canton says, The uh, Nostradamus concept album from Judas Priest uh, just did nothing for him. You know, I haven't listened to it yet either. I have it. It's one of those albums that I've bought to complete a collection, but I haven't listened to it, so maybe I'm a bad fan at that point. Stephen Rose, uh, Rocker Bust by ACDC. And I have felt that way about their albums since after Stiff Upper Lip. That, I think, was their last album I could actually get into and really enjoy. Everything after that has been bad for me. Phil Garrett, uh, shout out Phil Garrett at Ageless Art Tattoo in Clarksville, said Black Acid Devil by Danzig. Uh, Mallory Wright says, Drunk in the Daylight by the Coffin Cats. Jeremy Mathis, and he's not the only one, so we're going to get into this. Jeremy Mathis and Bobby Nailitz both said Saint Anger. Alvaro Gomez, Forbidden by Sabbath. You know, I like that album, actually. I think Forbidden is a lot better than Dehumanizer and such. So uh, Matthew Frake says Risk is worse than <laughs> Super Collider. Neil Rodriguez said Lulu. And I want to know if you're, Neil, if you're a fan of Lou Reed saying that or if you're a fan of Metallica saying that. Because I don't believe Metallica counts that as an actual album. Yes, they did write the music to it, which I've always said that is uh, mediocre Metallica music over bad Lou Reed poetry. Tron Haganator 
Nice, nice screen name there. It says Abigail 2. You know, I'm weird about sequel albums. Like, there's really only one that even did any kind of justice, and that's Bad Out of Hell 2. I mean, you have these magnanimous, awesome fucking albums like Welcome to My Nightmare. Fucking uh, another good one is, uh, you know, Abigail. Shit like that. But then you you can't release Welcome 2, like the number 2, My Nightmare. It just doesn't work for me. I mean, you can't fucking just do shit like that. I, it just doesn't work for me, brother, as, as Hulk Hogan would say. Russell Jackson Art says, Nevermore the Obsidian Conspiracy. I'm not a big fan of Nevermore. Uh, my drummer Todd is. I think so. I think Todd's a fan of Nevermore. I might be wrong with that. So I'd have to li- get into it and listen to it. Blitz Speed Metal says, uh, Force of Habit by Exodus. I'm like a diehard Exodus fan. I'm like the 80s, and I love Exodus. They put, they put on a great show live, but I don't know. Uh, Kane Steele says, My Dying Bride, Feel the Misery. Mick Watkins, bass player of Wild Ride, says, Carnival of Souls by Kiss. Ultimate Power Corrupts is Diabolus and Musica by Slayer. Grave Dancer says, Virtual Eleven by Iron Maiden. It's so damn repetitive and unoriginal, can't stand it. Corey Sims, uh, another forbidden on there. It's like, come on, people, really? Ancient Warrior Band says Hammered by Motorhead, but it's not that bad, he says. You know, I'm weird when it comes to that because I think Motorhead has, you know, three distinct parts of their career. You've got the original lineup, or the classic lineup, I should say, and then you've got the 80s, and then you've got the the mid-90s to millennium lineup, the last... uh, 20 years of their career from like 95 to 15. I could really pick an album from each of those that I would probably say is the band's worst album. Stumpy El Hombre, Jared, says Toxic Holocaust, Primal Future 2019, High Healer, Man of War, The Lord of Steel, just to name a few. So keep sending those answers in to me. I am digging every single one of them because it gives me things to look forward to and to see what all you guys think, you know, of music out there. So I'm kind of torn on my reply. I would have to say something like, I'm not a big Dio Sabbath fan. I love the Mob Rules, but I'm not a fan of Dehumanizer or The Devil You Know, like that kind of uh, Dio album with them. It just doesn't do it for me. So I would have to go with like Dehumanizer or The Devil You Know. So this week's question is, what musician do you admire no matter what they're a part of? You know, and for an example, like Joe Walsh, what, you know, did you like him in the James Gang and not in the Eagles? You know, just a, just something like that. So what musician do you admire no matter what they're a part of? Make sure you guys are clicking the links to the bands below, the official websites, the Bandcamp pages, the YouTube pages, the Spotify playlist. Without being able to play shows, this is the only way these guys can make any kind of money. So please click those links, show your support. And help these people out, because they are the ones that need it the most. Also, thank you to the sponsors, Mom's Music, Maxwell's House of Music. Go get your gear from those places. Check out Burt, Bobby, Brooks, Howard, and Mike uh, at both of the stores. Click the links, momsmusic.com, maxwellshouseofmusic.com. I also want to say, anywhere you can get your, this podcast, you can get the Wrestling Steve Show, the It's Gonna Get Weird podcast, and the Night Demon Heavy Metal podcast. So please... After you're done listening to this show, listen to these people as well. They have great content. Super fucking rad people. Check them out. Also, Better Days Records. If you're in the Louisville, Kentucky area, or you know, you can click below. They have a Discogs page for some really cool, rare shit you can find. So, check out Better Days Records. So, I do want to say thank you out there to the new partners of the Metal Forge, Unchained Tapes, and Mercenary Press. Click the links below. Check those awesome new partners to the Metal Forge out. And if you use the code METALFORGE10, you will get a 10% discount off of your total purchase at both of those retailers and partners. Thank you. So, let's get into some music here. This is from Witch Trap's Evil Strikes Again album, released back in March of 2020. This is Evil Strikes Again. <laughs>
Metalheads, I'm being joined here with Hugo from Witch Trap in Medellin, Colombia. Dude, thank you for coming on the show this week. How are you doing? Uh, thank you, man, for uh, the invitation. Once again, it's a, it's a honor, and I'm so proud being here in Metal Force Radio. And a big hail to all the followers and listeners to your to your metal show. Definitely. Okay, so, Thank you. Yeah. About Witch Trap, you all have been around for quite a long time. You've been around since the early 90s. And ever, yeah, since, yeah. and ever since about 2003 or so, you've had the same lineup, right? Yeah. That's rad as shit, because not a lot of bands can say that 20 and 30 years down the road. So tell us about Witch Trap. How did you all get it going? Well, uh, I can say many things about our band, because in the beginning of the band, we started just like fun, younger guys with uh, the intention only to have fun and playing some stuff. We In the in the, in the the early days, we, we only play acoustic guitars and making some uh, imitations. If, if we could say it in this way, uh, playing some chords in the guitar and making some covers just for fun. But in some day, uh, we have, we, we don't have, uh, any, any gear or electric guitar or drum acoustic set. We only play with, uh, with seats imitating, imitating like a drum, you know, and with acoustic guitars and, just want to to imitate uh, the the idea to have a band but f- through the time comes to us we we finally uh, could save some money to buy a, a very cheap uh, a, a electric guitar and a small uh, amplifier and since then we 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 found an idea to to compose something real seriously you know so i remember i remember we we bought the uh, the, the guitar and the amplifier with uh, something like maybe 80 bucks. It was really cheap, you know. But uh, a friend of mine uh, who played in a punk band um, uh, in the neighborhood I live, he he gave me his uh, drum set, but it was handcraft. Oh wow! And yeah, and with with that uh, uh, gear if we can call it this way we we start to play some real songs we have some ideas as i told you with acoustic guitars but since then we start to create and compose and writing stuff for our band we we initially we start to uh, playing some old school death metal and we started a band called dark Mil- dark millennium but after a year i think uh, of playing this uh, style of uh, so gender, we choose the idea to play old school trash metal because nobody in Colombia da- did it. All, all, all bands in Colombia play death metal, especially because the, the influence of massacre from Colombia or massacre, uh, they got some recognition in the underground scene because they record an album. I don't know if you know them, uh, an album called Rickham and they were pressed by Osmos production. So this band did a, a big influence in every, every band in Colombia, but we realized we wanted to play old school trash metal. So. Having in mind this, uh, we thought that we could get more exposure playing and all stuff that nobody plays played in that time. And, um, and, and actually we want to play old school because we were very, very influenced by heavy metal stuff, bands such as Raven, Ambil, uh, speed metal like, uh, Running wild, excited, and uh, we, we we really want to play like them, but a little bit faster, a little bit uh, heavier. We sort of we sort of burn in that in in that time. Definitely. Uh, so it, it's obviously 
to see which are be very very influenced by Venom uh, because the lyrics, because the uh, the logo, you know, uh, I, I saw uh, similar uh, touches, right. you know, definitely. Yeah, and, but, and who doesn't yeah. love Venom though, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, and uh, and the, and the stuff the stuff comes in in late nineties. Uh, I remember we were uh, invited to play in an underground uh, metal show here in Colombia, and someone someone guy asked us to 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 do an EP, and we found it like a, an opportunity to finally record something because our demos were recorded in our rehearsal room uh, with a really pure gear we recorded in a recorder with a microphone included into the recorder and we put uh, the recorder in some special place when something uh, when the record got uh, a kind of uh, clear sound right you know? the best place in the room uh, yeah yeah so after after that demo tape we start to record and sell in some in some uh, underground shows people start to say hey your band is pretty good it's different and i like because you you play old school uh, and it sounds something new for the uh, metalheads here in Colombia. And I start to send uh, uh, to Pelpam, Pelpam, uh, around the world in Germany, in the United States, uh, in Europe, uh, in Japan. And I start to get some feedbacks by email and it was pretty good for us. So turning back to the early 2000 and uh, uh, late 90s uh, the ep was was an opportunity to get more exposure out there in the underground so this this ep is called which metal uh, it was a step forward in our musician career we we never thought that our band were going to be recognized in the underground as we have gotten uh, right now but we were so happy uh, seeing uh, a professional recording if we can call it in this way but uh, the people say outside of Colombia say, "Hey, your music is pretty good. You're doing great, and you have a, a good, good stuff." And so, this is the beginning of Wistrap in few words. Because I could, I could tell you a lot of things. Because we had uh, very hard days. Uh, we have the problems uh, in, so in social living, right? Because the narco traffic, because the uh, cops. Even nowadays, uh, our country is having very hard problems in because the government and shit like this but uh but in in those days it was fun because it, it was part of our jobness you know the, our job uh, well but but we love we love it definitely yeah. and, and i think you have to love what you're doing to continue what you're doing because if you don't love it then why are you doing it uh-huh one of the things I, I want to know about is you said you'd came, you were playing acoustic guitars, you were playing drums against, you know, like the table and stuff like that for shows. Yeah. When, when you all were coming up, when you all were, you know, growing up, were there many actual clubs and shows that you could go to? Were they all underground? How, do, how does that work down there? Uh, I, I don't know how to, to answer it because in Colombia, norm, normally for having a band in was uh, because a uh, help between the musicians in different bands. It's like a common raid, you know what I mean? So we lend our stuff and our gear uh, to friends in other bands. And that's, way, that's the way we, we could grow up uh, playing music and even recording. I remember in the first two recordings we did, I have to lend uh, uh, stuff or not rent because this is, in Colombia it's hard to find gear, good gear, but uh, the underground is is, is a comrade uh, union, right? And we lend, we give the the we render the the stuff between us, and some guys uh, have the the chance to buy good gear because they have family in other countries like the USA, and they bought this this stuff in in the United States and bring it to Colombia. Uh, th this is the only way we got to grow up as musicians in Colombia. I don't know if you could understand what, I'm, what I want to say. Yeah, I absolutely I do, and I think everybody else does too. I think a lot of American musicians take it for granted that they could go to any music store and get anything. 
where coming from places like Colombia and, you know, I know Sepultura in Brazil had said that how hard it was to get instruments there too. So yeah. I think that don't take stuff like that for granted. You know, you, you can't always just go to the, the music store down on the corner or to the bar down on the corner and watch a show because yeah. they might not, you know, you might be in a place where it doesn't happen. Yeah. In Colombia, in Colombia, to find a metal bar or metal club in early 2000 uh, was uh, was hard to find. It. I I remember the only one bar in my in my hometown in Medellin it started in 1999, I think, and only one metal bar in a big city with three four million people. But once this bar started, we find a a place with all metal hills in our area. Uh, we could meet and share beers and talk about music or maybe to fix uh, shows, especially in, in early days, 90s and 80s. Uh, we fix shows in the roof of our homes or maybe in the cellars. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Even even there is on, on YouTube, there are a couple videos where we were playing uh, in, in, the, in the roof of my home with some friends. And you can see the, the cheaper gear we have. And you, you can find, because we, we have another band. We play in another band called Nightmare. Uh, it's a heavy metal stuff. And we did some, some covers in that, uh, in that show. You can find it. Uh, you can search on YouTube. But, uh, you can search Nightmare and Slayer. Nightmare Evil Has No Boundaries. Or Nightmare uh, Am I Evil. And you can see these this videos on YouTube. And it, this is the way we did it in in nineties and eighties eighties. So big festivals in Colombia never happened until two thousand one, two thousand two maybe. And uh, the, all the shows were in the roofs, cellars, or small venues uh, where the same bands fix uh, or or book the shows. You know what I mean? So. You, you can find something uh, like 50, 40 people for show in those years. But once I told you the festival started to come in Colombia, uh, we start to get up for, for the shows here. But as I told you, find uh, clubs, uh, metal clubs or metal bars here. Nowadays it's, it's, it's good because we have something like 10 bars or 10 metal clubs when people can go to different places in the, in the city. And Bogota has a big scene, but uh, things have changed because the 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 time has the time has come. So we we have a yeah we have a big a big scene. Right Tell on. me. All right, we're gonna take a real quick break. We're gonna hear from some new sponsors, and we're gonna come right back with Hugo Witchhammer Munez from Witch Trap here at the Metal Forge. Hey everybody, let me tell you about the new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Unchained Tapes. They're an independent Pennsylvania tape label. They focus on extreme metal and punk with a killer approach to the tape scene. Visit their web store at unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com now to get your fill of tapes. And for being a Metal Forge listener, enter the code METALFORGE10 at checkout to get a 10% discount on your total purchase. That's unchainedtapes.com bigcartel.com Hey, are you all in a band? Do you need merch for shows? By now I'm sure you've seen all the Metal Forge patches that are available along with many more. Well, the printer I use for those is UKR Patcher. Check them out on Facebook and Etsy. They do awesome custom work and for extremely affordable prices for any band budget. Check them out at UKR Patcher on Facebook and Etsy. Y'all released the first full length back in 2002, the actual full length album, and you've released yeah. five total. And you're getting ready to come out with a new EP here in June. Is that correct? Yeah, the, the first album was Sorcerer's Bitch. It was it was done in 2002. Uh, since then, I remember we record an EP called Nightmares of the Dead, and it, it was released on 2005, maybe I can't remember, but it was recorded in 2003 but only was released until two, three years later. Oh, wow. 
Uh, yeah, it looks like yeah. you're showing 2007 here on the Metal Archives. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I think I think it was going to be released by a French uh, label or the Alice Records. It was it was going to be released in 2005, but they broke. They broke. So since uh, we released it on 2007, after after oh, wow. we released our album. Uh, our second album, No Anesthesia, it was released in 2006. And the next year, the next year we did uh, the, the EP I told you. But all the process about our band, uh, it was it was slow, but continuously. I mean, we did something between between two, three years. And we have now a big uh, biography, discography. But uh, if we have in mind, there are hundreds and thousands of bands around the world to do an album year by year it could be get lost uh, in a month of old bands but once you create some anxiety in your fans we think it's, it's, it's good because when you release some some stuff no matter it's uh, an EP, a single or a full length the people list is going to put your uh, their eyes to new stuff because it's, it's, it's the answer that you create on them. Because all people is asking you when you meet them in bars, shows, uh, venues, you know, and they asking you all the time, hey, when is the new Witch Trap album? When is the new stuff you're going to release? And when we realize that there are some three years, maybe four, sometimes five, maybe, uh, we, we, we know this is the real time to, to do something new. Right. Yeah. And I think the more stuff you put out, the more fans you can make, which, yeah, like yeah. I said, brings me to June, where we're going to have an EP called Witching Metal coming out. Yeah. <laughs> Witching Metal was, was coming in 2000, and it was fun. We recorded on six-track, six-track recorder. It wasn't a kind of professional studio, and we recorded on tape. Wow. And, yeah, it was a big experience because we never we never do something like that. Never in our life. And I remember the, the, the sound engineer in the, in the studio told us a lot of things we have to do to make a good recording. And we were very surprised how was the process to record something. But, um, the Witching Metal was a big experience to learn how to do a good record. So we have a very low, uh, budget to do it very low. I remember I spent something like a hundred dollars to record this, this EP. It's a lot of money for us in Colombia, right. especially in those years, especially in those years. But it was a big experience. When we record this EP, uh, in 2000, it was on the Holy Week. It was done on the Holy Week in 2000. And we, we, we thought, the next album we are going to record in the same, in the same studio, but we are going to use another recorder he had for, uh, because it's, it was for 16 tracks on tape, uh, analog, analog system. And, um, uh, and we fix every, every detail to do the sorcery speech, uh, a better production than the Witching Metal EP. Even even which metal is right now re-released by Hell Sebanger Records, our label in around the world. They have they have do a good job with which trap, and it, it, I think in in a, in a month it's going to be released on the vinyl again, <coughs> and the C and the CD is now uh, on sale, you know. But which metal and Sorcerer the Beast were couple. A couple big experience to learn for us in the in the band because we uh, we had never done something like recording an, in an analog system and uh, all the all the all the things we have to do a record session because we we play on at the same time all the instruments when we record our demos so recording especially each instrument by separate it was a wow this is the way to record an album and the engineers. Let us know, yeah, guys, you have to record it. It's, it's a bit by separate. <laughs> wow, amazing. <laughs> Definitely. So these are yeah. songs that have that were re originally recorded in 2000. Is yeah, yeah. Oh, but, wow. So but, but the music was, was composed uh, in 1994, 1995, maybe. Wow. So, so we had, we had, we have a lot of stuff to record uh, in 2000. We have something like, well, you had uh, eight years of music to, to record. 
Yeah. Because I, yeah, we have you didn't work on just the same stuff the entire time. You wrote new songs as you went. I get that. Wow. That yeah, yeah. so you know you're doing the stuff that I wish you know these bigger bands would do like you know like the metallicas and the and the iron maidens you know where they write these songs years and years and years ago but never actually put them out i would yeah you know, yeah you're doing one of my favorite things ever with this cuz <laughs> wow. i want to hear i want to hear the stuff that didn't make albums just to see what the album would have been like yeah yeah i i think i don't know how to do them to compose and play in tours in in the in the same time, but a band uh, like Witchtrap is an underground band. We record and practice the song and play some shows uh, in some cities. Maybe a tour by a year, but you rest uh, you, you rest uh, but, uh, by another year. So we have enough time to compose and write uh, write stuff. But the big bands have to do the at the same time touring and composing and writing. You know, it's different. Because right. we are an underground band. Right. We are an underground band, and we have enough time to uh, to record, to compose, to write, and time aside to touring. It's in different ways. For Maybe sure. Maybe some ideas comes where we are touring, but knowing the way, like Iron Maiden, like Metallica, uh, stuff, uh, bands like them, yeah, it's different. But any, anyway, anyway, it's fun when you are touring and some ideas comes to compose, you know? Definitely. Yeah. And and what I mean by that is, like, yeah, they get together and will session write for six or so months, and then they will produce an album, which will take yeah. up to a year to create. And then they'll tour on that for eight or nine months. Granted, a lot of the bands these days have drastically dropped their tour scheduling down. Not necessarily just yeah. because of their, they're getting older, but play less shows, I think it means more. That yeah. This might, it's that this might be the only time you get to see them on this tour kind of thing. But I want to hit on the artwork here really fast because looking back through No Anesthesia, Vengeance Is My Name, Trap the Witch, Sorceress Bitch, Evil Strikes Again, they have these, uh, in even Witching Metal. Witching Metal to me is a little bit different, but we'll hit that in a second. But all these other albums have such great artwork that's total thrash. Like you would see it and you're, you would look at the cover and say, I've got to listen to this. Okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, the stuff uh, you find old school trash. Uh, which metal, as you say, is, uh, is different because it was our first recording and we don't have a clear idea to what to do with our band. We were very influenced by the, uh, uh, heavy metal stuff, as I told you, and like hard rock bands. But when we record which metal, especially, we were very influenced by black metal stuff we were hearing in those years. Definitely. Okay? Then, and that's where I was going to go with this, because it has a very black death metal cover to it. Yeah, but we really know, we really know what we want to do with Witch Trap. We want to play old school trash metal. So once we, when we record Witch Metal, we realize, hey, man, we, we are doing so, so black, so raw, and, and we want to do it, uh, to make our songs, songs like old stuff. So when we start to record Sorcerer Beach, you know, Anesthesia, Vengeance is my name, Trap the Witch, and Evil Strikes again, we, we knew actually we how we want, how we want to sound. You know what I mean? Definitely. So, so in the production at the studio, in those albums, we focus our, our idea in the production to make it sound as we want to want to want to sound. So the difference between witch metal and all the stuff is this, uh, because we were influenced by black metal, but we wanted to sound, we wanted to sound old school, but we, we couldn't, we couldn't make a, a, a record, a surprise for us when we finish it, because we realized, hey amen, uh, it sounds more raw and, and, and black than we wanted to sound. If we if we play the songs right now and we record it, we could play it, we could do it on the studio and it will sound like it will strike again or vengeance maybe. But uh, it was something like the time. I mean, yeah, it was it, something. It, it was part of the magic I mean? at the time. Yeah. Yeah, it was the magic. The atmosphere we we had in those years because we were kind of young, and uh, and now we we have so clear we want we, what we want to do. So it's a, a small difference because the feeling is the same, 
but the sound production is different. You know Definitely. what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's interesting how old school it, it you wanted to make it sound in 2000. And I don't yeah. think a lot of, and just to put just like some dating on that for the listeners out there is if it was modeled off of Venom and, and a lot of black metal of that time period you're talking, which was already yeah. 20 years removed at that point. And, <clears throat> yeah. and if you recorded that now, you would have been 40 years removed. So people got to think that, you know, you were modeling stuff off of the stuff off of music in the early 1980s, like 81, 82, black metal, Venom, you know, 83. Uh, uh, so yeah, yeah, we're we're looking at almost those albums coming out almost 40 years ago now. You know, a lot of people don't realize that hey, that's a long time at this point. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> So with the pandemic, we've been, this has been one of the things that's been a constant in the show because it's affected everybody. Yeah, absolutely. What are you all doing next with, with the band? Okay, I could start saying that in the last year, because the pandemic, we have, we have to cancel a couple tours. Uh, one in, in the United States and other in Europe. It was going to be our first tour in, in Europe. But having in mind that we couldn't play in many places because of COVID and this shit, we start to compose and write and stuff. Right now we have uh, seven songs, eight, eight songs wow. ready to record. And we are doing the pre-productions for record a new album. Maybe, maybe we are going to start to record it on july or august and um, we want to to have it ready in in december or maybe january into 2021 and uh, and we will see what happens in, in coming days we are trying to reschedule uh the tours in in the united states we are been talking with a friend of us in in la who who is a, a promoter and booker and we want to do a the tour we had to cancel last year and doing the next year or maybe or maybe in in fall this year it depends of the covid situations and restrictions and lockdown for each country but in, if united states is open and we can fly to to the states maybe we are going to tour in in fall this year if it's impossible to do it maybe in early early 2021 we are going to tour in the states but in europe it's going to be uh, kind of hard to to fix again the the tour but we are been talking with an oil promoter and booking agency to make it happen because we had a big audience in the underground, you know, uh, in Europe that want to see which trap. And we, we, we have only played once in, in Oslo, Norway. It was in 2040, if I remember. Let me think. Uh, yeah, we, we playing in, in, October 30th, 30th, and we, we play only one show in a big festival in the, in Oslo, but we want to tour in Europe. We will love it. We really, really love it because we have good feedback from Germany in, in Sweden nowadays and Norway. And we will see, we will see what happens. This, this COVID has changed everything for, for all people. But I, I, as I told you before, the, the first thing we are going to do is a new album. Definitely. So we have we have the stuff and we are going to record it. We have our home studio and we can do it very easy. Yeah, for sure. And, that's and, it, and yeah. I'm sure it'll be super interesting for fans of the band for years on end now to finally get to see you guys and just be in shock and awe of what you are going to play live because you could throw, (laughs) you could throw something out from 20 years ago and there it is, you know, and that's, that stuff is super rad to me. I love, I love it when bands do that, that will play deep cut tracks that, you know, they might not be popular now, but they were popular then, you know, I I dig that. Yeah, yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, Yeah. So let's take another quick break. We're going to come right back with more Hugo Witchhammer Munas from Witch Trap here at the Metal Forge. Hey, let me tell you guys about Mercenary Press. They're an independent London label and distributor of all things metal. Mercenary Press delivers the goods from their own independent zine. Trust me, you're going to want to get in on that. To distributing various bands from all over the world, including Cramp from Spain and Sadistic Force from Texas. 
visit mercenarypress.bigcartel.com to find out what all they have in stock and what you can order. And for Metal Forge listeners, enter code MetalForge10 to receive a discount on your total purchase at mercenarypress.bigcartel.com. Check it out now. Welcome to the night. You think you know Night Demon? Then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop, the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. I want to shift gears. I want to ask some questions about you personally, okay? Okay, okay. These these can be music-related. They can just be related to general life. But if you're you're good to go, I'm ready. Okay. What band do you like that none of your friends like? Okay. um, I I think Pink Floyd. I I don't like Pink Floyd, but I, 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 I would love to. I have... I have given the time and the chance because I have heard Pink Floyd many times, but I can't find something fun for me. So all, all the time when I heard Pink Floyd, I got sleep. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're not a big fan of Pink Floyd, but everybody yeah, else but does. But all my friends, all my friends love it, love it. Uh, but I, I can't. I, I, I have tried many times, but I can't. <laughs> Understandable. So, what is a band that you like that they don't like? The band I like that they don't like. I think uh, it could be Boybot, maybe. Boybot is not, uh, not very good band uh, for the people of my hometown. They find it something raw and progressive and weird. But to me, it's amazing. To me, it's amazing. Right on. And and see, that's what it's all about. You know, it's... it's yeah. Like where we it's can, subjective, you know. Yeah, definitely. So what would be your biggest pet peeve with people? I could I could say that I hate when people talk to me and push their fucking finger Ooh. on my bed. I hate that. Oh yes. Don't definitely. touch me. Don't touch me. It's just a speak. I, I understand, but don't touch me. Yeah. I the, hate it. Well let me tell you something. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No, no. No, I hate it. Uh, it, it made me get angry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, because I'll I'll have somebody come up and be like put their hand on my shoulder and be like, Hey, what's going on? And I'm like, no, don't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm just okay, like, I, 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 yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's like, get <laughs> off, man. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What advice would you give your younger self? What the hell? <laughs> it's a hard, it's a hard talk. <laughs> I don't know, man. Actually, I don't know. Uh, it's like, uh, it's, it, when when you have when you have something to do and uh, the things doesn't run like you th- think is going to happen, I mean I am a very patient pe- person, so for me it's it's easy to handle everything. You know what I mean? Right. But I I can I can I call co- I can't answer this. Okay, no, no, I get it. I mean, no, <laughs> I mean you you seem like even just talking to you the short time that we that we've been talking, you seem like a guy who just lets things happen naturally and let them come as they, as they do. Yeah. 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 So, which which is awesome. I think, I, I, I think, uh, I live my life one time by time. I mean, uh, one thing at the same time, right? Because people, people lives like they want to, uh, take everything at the same time. And it, I, I try to live my life as outside of the stress uh, stuff. Right. Because if you want to take uh, one thing, another stuff, and working and at all uh, fixing everything all the, at the same time, I get stressed. And in my mind and way to express myself, I 
took uh, I take um, the the stuff with patients and I don't want to get my mind stressed so because it, it get me get uh, so angry and furious you know and so I take one thing on 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 on, on the time only one thing you know For you sure. know what I mean and, and when I saw people that manage a lot of stuff at the same time, I, I think, what the hell, how, is, how, <laughs> how, how he did to do that? I can't. Maybe the girls have, can, can handle this, but n- not a man. You know, the, the men, we, are, we attend only one thing at the time, you know? Right. No, no a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's what they say is like uh, small picture, big picture. Like yeah, you yeah. focus on the corner where some where somebody else focuses yeah. on everything. Yeah, I get it. Every- Black Sabbath or Led Zeppelin, if you had to choose. Oh, uh, Black Sabbath, absolutely. <laughs> right. There's. I don't think there's any other answer to that question. Um, <laughs> if you again, if you had to choose, denim or leather? Denim. Denim. Yeah, because you live yeah. in a temperate climate where it's like hot all the time. So yeah, leather would be rough. <laughs> The weather in my country is tropical. Right. So leather, leather, to dress leather here is, is like being in, inside a hell, you know. <laughs> uh, For sure. He, we had never felt real, real cold like you have in, in winter in the States. Right. But denim is, denim is, uh, is fresh and it's like, uh, young. I, I remember it gave me, uh, it's moved me to the old days when I was young, you know, when I was a teenager and dress a metal shirt with a denim, you know, right? denim gym. And it, it's made me feel like young guy, even if I am, I am 48, but when I dress denim and metal t-shirt, I feel like, like teenager, you know? Yeah, like you're 23 it's, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you collect anything? Mm, collect anything? Music? Yeah, but other than music, do you? What do you collect? I don't know. Uh, ah, okay. I collect uh, knives. Cool. Yeah, I have something like thirty, forty knives. And actually, actually, nowadays I have stopped to collect uh, knives. But I have, I, I did it in the past. But it was my uh, the, the stuff I collect. Definitely, you know? and I'm sure you know yeah. uh, different styles and stuff like that, like butterfly, yeah. switchblade, pocket knives. You know, yeah, I, I love blacksmithing as well. I don't do it. I would like to, but it's one of those okay. things where like I love like certain ways things are done, like Damascus knives, where it's layered. I love that stuff. Okay. So cool. Wow, stuff. cool stuff. Cool stuff. Huh? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> what is the worst album by your favorite band? Favorite, my favorite band is Venom, absolutely. And oh, that's going to be maybe, tough. But, yeah, but Motorhead too. But let me think. I I think the the worst album from Venom could be from eighties. Uh, I say with uh, with that war with Satan. Wow. I, I like. Yeah, I think my favorite is a Welcome to Hell, then Black Metal, and then Possessed. Uh, I'm talking about the '80s stuff, okay? Right, right, yeah. And, and uh, yeah. let me let me preface. But, let me let me jump in here and say that I, I, I'm not, I'm I'm not saying that I what we say is 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 a bad album. But it's out, a of, good out album, of those out of, of those out of those albums, I get what you're saying. Uh, production on that album is is not so good either, in my opinion. Yeah, it's it, it yeah. it's different. It's it's a lot rawer than. Welcome to Hell and Black Metal. So it's different. So yes, I I can I can get behind that. And with Venom, you really have to break down all three parts of their career because the demolition years are completely different than the Absolutely. 80s. Absolutely. And then when Chron- yeah. and when Kronos comes back in yeah. like what 2001 or something, they're a completely different band again. Just like Motorhead for that matter, like you'd mentioned Motorhead Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It, Venom, Venom is very influenced by Venom. It's just un, unspeakable. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> so I, I could get behind that with being there, being the, the worst album of that era for them. Like I said, it's because uh, I think production, I mean, the CD art and, uh, and the vinyl looks great, but the audio yeah. production is just different. Pretty different. Yeah. I think they they lose something in the in the style and the magic they had. 
the production in many bands has making difference, uh, big difference when you hear it. For sp for example, I I'm I'm not going to say something against Metallica, but when I heard the Black Album, I lose all my interest in the band because of the rawness wasn't there. Yeah, the sound is absolutely amazing, but this album has nothing nothing fast. It's very slow. When I heard it by first time, I remember uh, I was in the in the house of a very known heavy metal head in Colombia called uh, he, his name is Mauricio Montoya, but all people call him Bull Metal. He was very known in the underground scene, very very known, I think. And we were hearing the, the this album by first time, and once the album ends after full, uh, where is the fast song? I mean, Metallica has, has a, at least two two fast songs in on each album right like battery like fight for it with fire topper on the rise and uh, damage incorporate dire save is a pretty fast song but the black album is is a slow all the time i think the faster song is enter sandman but this is not fast it's it's only a funny song you know i mean uh, oh to absolutely have fun, but yeah a, a radio song but uh, not a fast song like uh, they they used to do it in early days so having in mind this uh, when i heard when i heard uh, the that war with satan i found i found the the longest song and the same title song i f what the hell this is not venom and the production is different when we are talking few ago uh, about and we found this uh, different and it, it was not catchy to me. Definitely. And it's, it's important when music's catchy because when you get a good, when you, when you do a good chorus, when you do something catchy waves, the people get connected with music. And this is important. No matter if the production is good or worse, when music is catchy, when music has feeling and group, you, you, you are trapped like them. You know what I mean? Definitely. So, and I think that same thing, what you're talking about, like the, you, you said you got disinterested with the production on the black album because it changed. That's when they really did change. I think with Iron yeah. Maiden, I think Iron Maiden did the same thing. Their production changed on peace of mind. And yes. And when, cause I don't get me wrong. I know that everybody loves that album, but you know, the predecessor, like number of the beast and then what came after it's yeah. sa it's sonically different, and where I love Revelation and you know stuff like that, um, if Icarus could fly, where I love those songs, and everybody else loves the Trooper. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it, but it just sounds it sounds lower mixed, and it, it, it kind of yeah. almost it kind of almost kills it for me because I'm just like, yeah. but it's not. It's not as loud as everything else, and I'm just like, ah, I what am I gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, when no, it, I got, so if I listen I, to number and then that, and I'm just like cranking up the volume, and I'm just like, no, nah, I don't want to do that because then you get the hiss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what is your most well, unpopular music opinion? I hate I hate uh, the popular music from my country. I, I don't like it a lot. Uh, but uh, nowadays, reggaeton is, is shit music, shit music. And but I I respect I respect whatever whatever is uh, done in music. But I I put my eyes and my ears only on rock and roll and heavy metal stuff. Right. In Colombia, this is fun. It's fun. The the thing I'm going to tell you because in Colombia, metal has used to used to do the 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 work uh, poser, not for the people is like like you used to you used to do it. Like people is like uh, very fashion, you know. Right. No, it, here is different. Poser is like a people that listen another kind of music different than metal. Okay. This is the concept. This is the concept we 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 have in Colombia. So it looks like a radical attitude. You know, it's the way we live it. It's the way we we build our our attitude to live metal. So in eighties, I remember when you you get into into the metal scene, uh, the old ones look at you if you listen and other stuff different than metal. So once they realize you are only into metal, they open okay. the, right. the, the space to learn music, to 
chair stuff to um, home trades, you know, recording home tapings. But it, it's our way we live, Merrill, in Colombia. Even, even in Colombia, nowadays things has changed a lot of, because nowadays people have an open mind. But for us, we are older in, in Tumeral. It's, it's kind of manage this, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to manage this way of, of thinking. But we understand because we respect every, every way of feeling and enjoy music. Uh, so if you ask me what I, what I had of popular music, I hate everything. Definitely. Don't get me wrong, you know? Don't get me wrong, please. I don't. I don't like to listen to pop. I don't want to listen boleros or salsa or vallenatos. <laughs> I, I, I don't. Hear, I don't hear nothing like that. Maybe I heard some some stuff like uh, Credence Clearwater Revival. It's kind of rock and country. It's a right. good mixture. Yeah, I, I love them. I love them a lot. But my ears can hear another different than that. I, I, I mean, my spectrum of music is only into rock and roll and heavy metal. For sure. I mean, I can I can I can hear grind uh, grindcore, uh, brutal death metal and have no problem. But if is if if the stuff is different of this spectrum I told you, uh, my ears can can support can, Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, please. No, I, no, I, 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 no, I I I get you 100%. Uh, do okay. you, before we go, do you have any anybody you want to say hey to, give any shout-outs to? But uh, to say thanks to people, uh, because being a heavy metal man from Colombia, a country far away of the mainstream, is uh, I want to say thank you to all people that have given a chance to wish to be listened and enjoy our music, because we know we are underground music, we are an underground band, and I'm thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of you to to give the chance to listen to our music. It's it's hard for a Colombian band being known people from other countries. Uh, it's hard to get a good distribution to find uh, a big audience in other countries. So thank you first of all. Thank you to all of you to has given a chance to listen to our music. Secondly, uh, be safe, be safe because the COVID is real. Uh, even the restriction and lockdown are kind of weird to manage this situation. And uh, please be safe, be friendly, and heavy metal is our still life. And thank you, you. Thank you to you, to a Metal Force Radio. Dude, thank you so much for, for giving the chance to talk about our, our my life, my band, and some thoughts. Hell yeah! Um, All right, we're gonna come right back. We're gonna finish this up. We're gonna listen to some more Witch Trap. Hey guys, Wrestling Steve of the Wrestling Steve Show here. Uh, so if you're currently listening to the Metal Forge with Mark Jackson, then you understand that Mark Jackson has a pretty discerning taste when it comes to music as a whole. You also understand that he has a discerning taste for professional wrestling, just like me. The, my show is called The Wrestling Steve Show. Uh, I talk about modern and classic pro wrestling in a completely unbiased, unfiltered way. Be sure to check me out on all available podcasting platforms. That is The Wrestling Steve Show. And I am the host, Wrestling Steve. Just remember, uh, like like Confucius said, uh, man who goes through turnstile in Thailand uh, is going to Bangkok. Pro wrestling. Hey, it's Mark Maxwell at Maxwell's House of Music. Listen, all this stuff is now available to purchase on our website. Check it out at maxwellshouseofmusic.com. We carry all the top brands, like Fender. We got Gibson. We also have basses. We've got ukuleles. We've got drums. We've got sound gear. We've got keyboards. Hi, this is Frank Green from the It's Gonna Get Weird podcast, a podcast I host with Scott Clark. You're going to get everything you need on the podcast. Lots of laughs, lots of music, some sports, and maybe some inappropriate shit. Usually that's Scott's one. Check it out. It's going to get weird. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and everywhere you get your podcasts online. It's going to get weird. I tell you what, if you don't get out of here and make it fast, I'm going to put my foot right in your ass. Oh! 
My last question okay. is, what album changed your life? <laughs> I have one album. It was Kill Em All. Ah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you something. Before I was Metalhead, I was 14 years old, 14 years old, just a teenager. And I listened to salsa a lot here in Colombia. And I was a kind of nerd person. I only dedicate myself in those years on, on the study and the study and the study and practice on basketball. No, nothing more than that. I get into metal, into metal because I have to do a homework for the class, for the classroom about the rock story. And I meet, I found this album to do the homework and I was searching something and it was, it was the year 1990. It was on February on this year. And I discovered this album to do the homework for the classroom. You know what I mean? So once I heard it, I my my mind blows up, you know. What the fuck is this music? It's amazing. To me, it was absolutely amazing. And one song, the second song, the third song, and me, I, I thought, what the hell? This is real music. This is fucking amazing. It, this was the music I was just hope to hear someday. It blows my, it blows me away. You know? So I stopped to listen salsa forever <laughs> and start to listen only metal because Kill em All changed my way of, of see the world, my way of listen to music, my way of live my life. Since then, I start to, to, to find people that listen to heavy metal in my neighbor my neighborhood and i i find couple friends that listen metal real metal and, and then i discover motorhead slayer destruction uh Kelty frost uh, possessed uh, death uh sepultura then i discovered saxon iron maiden and but kill em all was the album who taught me and changed my life forever nice. forever and even today i listen to kill em all is i was a teenager and each song to me is fucking amazing because the the guitar tune is amazing and the energy has this album is bel believe it or not i think this is the best album ever done ever i i don't care if metallica has become a poser band i don't care that but kill em all for me is something in the top of Definitely. the world yeah I love this album. It changed my life. And I think my life uh, in those years in Colombia, because the narco traffic was a, a, a kind of civil war inside of the, of the city, because all days were deaf people, because the uh, guerrilla and narco traffic, they're fighting for places. Even uh, I live in a neighborhood was very affected because the narco traffic, because Pablo Escobar. But Kill em all and metal music put me outside of this kind of living. Right. So I, 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 I dove my life to metal and I own my life forever. If I keep living as I was doing in those years, maybe I will not alive today. Maybe I was killed or murdered in those years. Right. Almost, almost all my friends and my neighbors were killed almost almost all of them because they are living into narco traffic and listen to salsa and stuff like that but metal people all of them we are alive nowadays right uh, so kill them all for me is everything it was a lifesaver you know? yeah a lifesaver absolutely wow man that's that's so moving to hear somebody say something like that that how an album did actually you know change your life Change you know, my life. I mean, not, and not even from a not even from a music standpoint, but just a change like in your every day to day life. You know, it didn't didn't change the way you played music. It it, it yeah. did that. Don't get me wrong, okay. but it changed everything in your life. Not yeah, just yeah. not just your musical, not just what you listen to. Yeah, dude. That's, I have to tell you about that's heavy. The, the story. Yeah, that's that's super heavy, man. Yeah, yeah. I love metal as part of my life, my life. So uh, it's it's good. It's good to realize nowadays that uh, metal changed my life for good. You know, definitely. So I'm going to play a song here on the way out from the new old witching metal. <laughs> uh, what do, what do you want me to play off of witching metal? You know what? 
my favorite song from this album is Command of Hate. It's my favorite song. Hell yeah. So that's what we're going to yeah. play then. Dude, Hugo the Witch Hammer. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah. I love that. I, I, you know, I never had one of those names. So it's like super cool that, you know, you, you have a nickname and everything with it. But seriously, Hugo, thank you so much for coming on the Metal Forge this week. It has been an honor talking with you, and I hope to get to see you all on tour soon. No, thank you. Thank you to you, brother, for giving me the opportunity to share my stuff, my thoughts, and talk about metal. It's something that is, I am a passionate to talk about metal. It's, it's the best thing I live. And thank you, Metal Forge Radio. Thank uh, you, sir. Hell yes. I love you guys. I love you guys. I'm best, best regards for all of you. And keep listen to metal. Keep the metal flame alive inside of you. And have fun as much as you can. And hope to see you once again. And ho hopefully we can meet uh, on fall this year in the States because we are going to tour. If it doesn't happen this year, absolutely into in 2021, we are going to do it. We love North America because you have given a lot of support to Witchstrap and we are thankful from the bottom of our heart uh, for all your support. Thank you so much. Definitely, dude. Be Thank metal. you. As you heard him a second ago, this is from Witching Metal. This is Command of Hate.
Hey, thank you all for tuning into this week's episode of the Metal Forge. I want to take a minute to remind you guys about the Patreon page. Over on the Patreon page, we have the tiers set up to support the production of the show. We feature the Down and Dirty, which is just a buck. There's nothing special for that one. It just sends me a thank you because every dollar helps. Then there's the Double Down and Dirty. Much akin to the Down and Dirty tier, everything helps produce the show in the end. You make your presence known, and I appreciate that more than you realize. Thank you for being a dedicated friend and supporter to the Metal Forge. By selecting that tier, you will receive some cool Metal Forge stickers in your mailbox. Now, we're really going to start pounding the Metal Madness with the Apprentice Metalhead for just $5 a month. By becoming an Apprentice Metalhead, you'll be given early access to the shows, published 24 hours before everyone else gets it. You're also going to receive three entries in any contest that we do here at the Metal Forge. You're also going to receive a 10% discount on all Metal Forge merch, and you're going to receive a sweet Metal Forge patch for your battle jacket or backpack. And now, here is the big one. This is the Master Metalhead for just $10 a month. By becoming a Master Metalhead, you will receive a hand-numbered Metal Forge Master Metalhead membership card. You're going to be given early access to the shows as well, with 36 hours before everyone else. You're going to receive five entries in any contest that we do here at the Metal Forge. You'll be able to submit audio questions that I will use on the show of you asking questions to the upcoming guests. Remember, timing is everything, and you will need to keep up with the upcoming guest list on the website. You're also going to receive advanced knowledge of any new merch coming out and be given a 25% discount on all Metal Forge merch. And you're also going to get all of the other rewards from the other tiers. So visit patreon.com slash Metal Forge Radio today and help support the Metal Forge. Rock on.